Okay guys, uh, in this video I'm going to teach you how to make a um, PVC bottle rocket launcher out of things you can find in your local hardware store and a couple of bits you might have lying around home. So the materials you're going to need, uh, for the main construction you're going to need 32mm PVC pipe, also known as 1.5 inch, also going to need um, 21 and a half millimeter PVC pipe. That's going to be the part that the bottle is going to fit over. And then to hold together all of the pieces of pipe, you're going to need these fittings. You're going to need two 32 millimeter corner pieces. You're going to need a 32 millimeter T section. You're going to need two 32 millimeter end caps. And then to join all those together, you're also going to need three 32 millimeter junction connectors. In order to get the smaller piece to fit into the larger pipe, you're also going to need one 32mm to 21.5mm reducer, also known, in, uh, known as a waste reducer fitting. Then, um, to connect on the bottle, you're also going to need one hose clip. I find that the 18mm, 25mm are a good size because they fit nicely over the smaller pipe. You're also going to need between 8 and 10 uh, cable ties, also known as zip ties. And then to join together all the PVC fittings tightly, so you get an airtight um, fitting, you're going to need uh, solvent cement, also known as PVC cement. I picked up all this from my local B&Q. And the final thing you're going to need, um, to, in order to put air into your chamber, is a bike valve. This is cut out of an uh, inner tube I bought from the local pound store. As long as it's got your standard bike fitting here, that's what you're after, because that will give us our, our way of getting our air pump on and to get the air into the chamber. And then finally, the tools you're going to need. You're going to need a hacksaw. I've only got a small one, but it should serve. A larger hacksaw is slightly easier to use in, in reflection. You also need an electric drill, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. And then finally, to do the measuring, I would recommend having a Sharpie permanent marker, because it marks nicely onto the pipe. And don't forget your ruler, and then a pair of scissors to cut out the valve from your inner tube. Our next step is to cut up the pipe into the right size sections. In order to make the launcher, you're going to need four 30 cm sections of the 32mm pipe and one 50 cm section of the 22.5mm pipe. Right, now that we've measured them, we're now going to cut them up. So, I recommend having some sort of vice or clamp to hold your pipe, as it does tend to move around a bit. Um, I'm going to be using my workmates. So, workmates are particularly useful because they've got little notches that will hold uh, other plastic, PVC, woods. Very, very helpful. So make sure it's nice and firm. And then with your hands on, on the pipe, try and slice straight and straight down. So, because in order for your um, pipe fittings to make a nice flush join, you want to have a nice flat ends to your pipe. When you get about halfway through the pipe, check it from sideways on to make sure you're going straight. We're going nice and straight at the moment. Don't worry about all this burring here. We'll sand the top with a bit of sandpaper later. Hold the end with the other hand, so when it comes off, you get a nice smooth cut. And there we go. One piece down, and then we'll cut the rest. As well as those other 32mm pieces, you're also going to need a short 8-10cm to 10 piece, which is going to join together the coupling, which, uh, which reduces the 32mm to the 21mm. There we go. Roughly 10 centimetres should allow enough space for you to fit together the two fittings from the T-junction into the reducer. Okay, so there we go. We've got our four 30 centimetre pieces of the 32 mil and our one 50 centimetre piece of 22 and a half mil. Okay, next step is we're going to create a bulge in the middle of the 21 and a half mil pipe. So when our bottle fits on the end, it's going to fit nice and snugly. So what you're going to need to do is take your permanent marker and your ruler measuring from the nice flat end where you didn't saw, measure roughly 25 centimetres. And then very gently follow it all the way around so you've got a nice flat line there. 
Now in order to create that bulge, we're going to need to heat up PVC pipe. And to do that, we're just going to use a normal tea light candle, which I put over the hot oven hob just for safety. So lining up the candle about one and a half centimetres above the pipe, rotate the pipe gently, and after a while we will start to feel the pipe begin to bend. If you see it start to blacken in places, you need to be turning it a little bit more quickly or a little bit more evenly. If you alternate which hand is turning it, then you should be able to keep a fairly even turn going on the pipe. There you go, see it start to bend, so now we're going to push it together to create our little bulge there, hold it in place while it cools. And after about half a minute or so, the pipe will nicely be bent into that lovely bulgy shape. So if we take our bottle now, the bottle should sit very nicely on top of the bulge we've just, we've just created. So for our next step, we're going to need to attach the bike valve, also known as a Foston valve, uh, also has other names in different countries, um, into the end of one of our end caps. So the way we're going to do that is using a ruler, if you measure across the width of the neck of the Foston valve, I've measured mine and it's 8 millimetres, then find a drill bit which matches up with that. I'm just using a normal 8mm bit with my electric drill. I haven't got low speed to begin with, so I can tap it in and then I'll speed it up to full speed as we get in there. So, so that our cane cap doesn't move anywhere, we're going to attach it into our workmates and then we'll begin drilling. There we go. So I'm very gently being careful not to squeeze the neck of the PVC pipe because I just want to go through the valve itself. So lining up the drill with the middle of the cap as best you can, gently start them off. Oh, luckily that went all the way through first time. So now if I unscrew our valve, and push it up from inside, or rather pop them in there, our valve should fit through very nicely indeed. Now this one's a little bit tight so I'm just going to give it a bit of a wiggle. The tighter we get it through, the better our seal is going to be. And actually, you should find you don't need to put very much, if any, glue on the inside to hold that firmly in place. Just to be absolutely sure, I'm going to put a little bit of impact adhesive, or you can use a pop, five minute epoxy works just as well, on the inside and the outside to hold it in place. I'm going to take my impact adhesive just some fairly strong glue head lying around to line a bit around the inside there just to hold the rubber in place then I'm going to do the same on the outside but I'm going to wait until that's part way through before I do that so in goes my valve gently squeeze it and push it on through now I'm just going to feed a little glob of glue on the outside there and then push them all the way through and then tuck in, the, tuck in the excess rubber underneath if there's too much remember you can always cut it off with a pair of scissors there we go, make sure there's no glue on the actual valve itself. And then leave that to dry so we can attach that a little bit later. So our next step is to join together the base of all the pipe work. What you're going to need for this, you've got your two 30cm 30, 3.2mm um, sections, the other two here, and then we've got our two corner joins, our T-junction in the middle, which when we glue it will need to be facing upwards, so our rockets can go straight up. And then we've got our two end caps here. So, when using PVC cement, as it's um, very, very smelly, it's also a solvent, make sure you're using it in a well-ventilated area. We're doing it in outside today. You can also do it in anywhere that's got a good extractor fan. So, when using PVC cement, make sure that both ends of the PVC are clean and that there's nothing on there sticky-wise either. So, I'm just going to remove the labels. There we go. And then using our solvent cements, very, very easy to use this. So lay around the inside where the pipes are going to join. Pipe trying to run away there. And then we're going to need to attach these into the couplings. So our end caps are going to go in one of the couplings. Screw them in nice and tight. And then when he's in, that will go off within about 5-10 minutes. Then, once we've got that one in place, we're going to attach our next piece. So again, 
make sure nice clean on both sides of the pipe. You can use primer, although I've never found that you need to. Twist it as you go it on, as you push it on, and then that will neatly attach itself. Continue to do that for the rest of the pipe work, and we'll follow the video around to see how that works. Now, when you come to the T-junction, as I said before, make sure when you glue the T, it's facing straight upwards. That way, when we fire the rockets, you get a nice clean trajectory. Other alternatives are angling it at 45 degrees, which will give you the best possible distance. So if you're doing this with a group of children, or doing it in school as part of an investigation, having it at different angles can work really nicely as a way of exploring angles, trajectories and vectors. So I'm just going to gently squeeze and twist and make sure I've got roughly 90 degrees there. And then onto your final one here. Be careful here because of the threads because you don't want to accidentally glue together your end cap and the end if you wanted to remove it at a later date. Now, on the topic of, di of different bottle launchers, I've designed this bottle uh, rocket launcher so it worked with water bottles. However, um, I'm also uh, wanting to use this to fire uh, bottles using hairspray. So the reason I've got these twist on end caps is to allow for that possibility in the future. Just to be absolutely sure I'm going to be fine, I'm going to remember to use my connectors. And then on goes the last bit there. So there we go, there is the base of the rocket launcher. And now I'll move on to the upper side. So for the upper section, you're going to need our short 8 10 cm piece, which is going to fit into the neck of our T section. Then we're going to need our, adap our adapter to join them together, and then our reducer for the waste pipe is going to go in there. Finally, our little bulgy bit is with the pipe is going to go in there, and that's going to form the part the rocket is going to latch onto. So just as before, using your PVC cements, join together all your pieces. One thing you'll notice is that as soon as the PVC cement joins together, the pipes start to, start to weld together. So make sure you've got it at the right angle you want before you start joining these pieces together. Now for this piece, because I've only got a small neck to work with, I'm actually going to put a layer on the inside of the pipe rather than putting it on the connector itself. Then using two fingers, gently press it into the joint. You might need to be quite firm. Remember, it sets off really, really quickly. There we go. Then, to get the, the second piece in, again, I'm going to put the PVC on the inside. And then the final part of the pipe work, gently twist and slide, and in we go. And there we have it. The base of our um, bottle rocket launcher. Our next step is going to be attaching the zip ties so we've got a special mechanism to hold the bottle onto the neck. Yeah. So our next step is going to be making our zip tie bottle holder so when we're pumping up the pressure, the rocket doesn't fly off straight away. In order to do that, we're going to use something very useful to do with bottles. I don't know if you've ever noticed, we've got this lovely little lip here. And a zip tie, or cable tie, has this wonderful little head here which when you put it on top like that, actually grips it very, very nicely indeed. We're going to use that to create a ring of cable ties around the outside of the bottle to hold it in place so it doesn't go launching up before we've built up the pressure sufficiently. So, in order to make our zip tie collar, we're going to take some duct tape. We're probably only going to need to roughly about 8 centimetres or so. Turning it upside down. What you want to do is create a nice little collar. Now, we've allowed lots of extra space in our bottle rocket launcher so that we can do this. So first of all, we're going to push down our zip ties and then we're just going to create this gentle collar. I like to put mine about a centimetre apart. Make sure they're the same height though. There you go. So you can see on this one, we've only used about six. That will still be sufficient to hold it in place. If you want to use more, you can do. 
Um, I've not found that it makes a huge difference. And then we'll just put another piece of duct tape on top to hold our zip ties in place. There we go, we've got our zip tie collar. Then our next step is to get our launcher again. And then our zip tie collar is going to be attached around the neck of the launcher, roughly there to hold the old bottle on. And then this is where our hose clips are going to come in use. So using only one of your hose clips, loosen it using a screwdriver so it goes over the bump in your bottle. Then once you've done that, put your bottle back on and then line up your zip ties so they're just sitting flushly on top of where the neck of your bottle is. There you go, so I've got those in place. So now I'm going to lift up my zip ties, so it's so my um, hose clip, so it's over the, the duct tape, tighten up my, my cable ties as much as I can, and then using a screwdriver, I'm going to tighten up the, the hose clamp, so it pulls those zip ties nice and tightly around the neck of my bottle. And then, because you've got your hose clip, you can gently adjust it so it's in the right place to hold it in nicely. A little bit of adjustment's always good. Tighten it nice and tightly there, and then your bottle's going to come up. As soon as you drop it back in place, the cable ties sit on top of the neck of your bottle, and then we're just going to use a very simple thing to hold it in place until we want it to be launched. So, at the moment, we've got our zip tie collar in place, but as you can as you probably noticed, some of these are a little bit loose, and they're at risk of coming off before our bottle goes. So to, in order to hold those in place, we're going to create a bit of a slip collar, which is going to grip those tightly until we want it to go, at which point we can pull it down, the zip ties will release, and the bottle should launch off. So to make our slip collar, we're going to need another two litre drinks bottle, which, making the top of our rocket, is going to come useful, because we can save this part of the top of the rocket to make it aerodynamic, and we can use the body to make our slip collar. So using a pair of scissors, pinch the side of the bottle to make it get dense. Then cut around the middle as straight as you can. We're going to save the lid for later. And then cutting down around about somewhere between 8 and 10 centimetres again. Now, in order to give us a, a launch way of doing that, we're just going to take a very small piece of duct tape. I'm just using a shoelace, and we're just going to attach that onto the outside of our slip ring. So that when we pull down the shoelace, down comes the slip ring, and off goes the bottle. One thing you can do, which works really nicely if you don't want to be right next to it, is if you hook the shoelace underneath the constructs, and then you can stand a little bit further away, and then as you pull it, down comes the slip ring, off goes the bottle, and very easy to reset for your next, next pump. So there you go guys, that's the basic design for the bottle rocket launcher. In the next video, I'll show you how to make the rocket that's going to go on top. Thanks for watching.